Welcome one, welcome all to the best of folders 2016. These are the best pocket knives that we've reviewed this year on the channel. The ones that really stand out to me for this year. And for some of you, you may be really astute and you can name all of them from the pocket clips just right there. But for the rest of you and or if you already know every single blade here on the table, you can tell just by those pocket clips. But you want to hear why these are a head and shoulders above the rest because we reviewed some great pocket knives this year uh, you know at the beginning of the year i promised you guys that i would step up the game in the pocket knife arena i believe we've done that i tried to get at least one to two a month in so we've had several pocket knives this year that we have tested and reviewed and these ones are the guys that are just like wow so if you're going in the to the end of the 2016 into the beginning of 2017 and you're looking for some premium good folders regardless of the price point we got budgets we got mid mid price points and we got high-end blades here today uh, you i think are going to be happy with any blade here on the table that we're going to walk through today so let's begin taking a look at the best pocket knives of 2016. All right, we're going to start with the Blues Brothers and with kind of the middle of the road during the on uh, the price point portion of it that's where we're going to start we'll do budget next and we'll wrap up with the high-end folders that really stood out to me and these two guys here are going to run you about the 65 to 75 dollar range just depends on what who what when where why and uh, you can get lots of different color combinations. I just happen to get blue with both of these. The top one here that we just recently did a review on is the Boker Patriot. It's a USA made Boker, which is really cool with 154 CM. It's got over three inches on the blade length, high saber grind there, lock back design, kind of a molded plastic handle, deep ride pocket clip. And uh, this guy is um, weighing in at 2.1 ounces. So these are going to be the some of the lightest in the bunch we're going to be looking at today. And the reason that I love this one so much is because of the price point to value. I'm a lightweight kind of guy. I love lightweight blades that are going to disappear in my pocket. This does that and is a heavy competitor with the Delica 4. It's using very similar quality of steel. It's even lighter than the Delica 4. And it's going to give you a little bit more reach and it's going to have a deep ride pocket clip that is rotatable right or left so i mean when when i go for now if i'm wearing like i am today i'm running around the house doing you know stuff cleaning up getting ready for some people to come over later this evening and i'm wearing basketball shorts or i'm wearing my sweats or whatever and i'm running around doing stuff uh, I particularly like carrying this knife because of just how lightweight it is and then how deep ride the pocket clip is. I'm not worried about it falling out of my shorts or whatever it may be. And I wear it, you know, I mean, any time. But that's really why I love it so much is I can wear it regardless if I'm wearing jeans or slacks or whatever. Or I can wear it with my lightweight pants and it doesn't feel like I got a brick in my pocket swinging around and the possibility of it falling out. So I love it if you're looking for a USA made ultralight folder that's over three inches. It's awesome. Next up here, this one was, oh my gosh, just so cool. It's the Broken Skull from Cold Steel. Uh, this guy, like I said, is going to be about, this will be on the higher end, like 75 bucks probably. Lots of different handle uh, combinations. Four inch blade, full flat grind. I really like that. A lot of Cold Steel knives are hollow grinds. And so when they came out with this full flat grind version and that just that cool clip profile even though it doesn't have a swedge on it i was super super excited they upgraded basically everything with their models this year which is really cool that this is a much better black coating than was on the old versions this thing's got a 90 degree spine and it's still made in taiwan but it's using a usa made steel and then they ship it over there to uh, have it put together and you know the the uh, quality control is very high at cold steel from everything that i've always seen but uh this is uh cts XHP. Just wanted to make sure I remembered the all the numbers. It's, it's a tool steel. It's it's in the higher end of edge retention. I love it. I've yet to have to tune up this blade, and I use it a lot. And it is a phenomenal slicer. Great for food prep. Um, you know, it doesn't have quite the traction that I would look for in say like a self defense blade. If that's what you're looking for, it does have the reach for it. But uh, I think the cold steel recon would be the full size recon would be the uh, way to go with that. But I love the fact also that not only is it you know that great reach great full flat grind awesome triad locking mechanism that we know from cold steel uh, but uh, tip up right or left handle love that ultra thin though so for such a big blade it's ultra thin weighs in at three ounces so for such a large knife uh, it really does disappear in your pocket because of the slimness 
and the ultralight capability. And that's why I love it so much. I can carry a lot of real estate on my blade, have tons of real estate on the handle as well. Huge, huge handle. And I know that it's not gonna you know, weigh down my pocket. Again, it doesn't feel like I have a brick swinging around in there, but I'm getting a really strong lockback design in a four inch blade, which is really cool to see all that. And with a premium steel now versus old OS 8 that Cold Steel used to use this, the, the new steels they're using is fantastic and a huge upgrade over it. So that is the Broken Skull. That is the Boker Patriot. Love them both. And uh, they are hitting it out of the parking, that kind of mid-weight range and some of the best that we've reviewed for 2016. On to the budget items, and I'm going to look at the more expensive of the two budget items first, but man, this came out of nowhere, folks. This is The Bird, which is a sub-company of Spyderco. They're owned by Spyderco. You can see that just in the blade shape and in the hole that they kind of turned into a beak just so that you kind of know that it's a Bird model versus a Spyderco model. Uh, but it came out of nowhere, and it's a redesign and a tweaking on the old Raven. This is a Raven 2, but it has CTS BD1 steel, which is a huge upgrade over HCR 13 MOV, in my opinion. It's extremely rust resistant, holds a good edge. It's not a super steel, I would say by any means, um, but it's super easy to tune up and get a razor sharp edge on and will hold an edge better than HCR 13 MOV uh, or OS 8. So it's an upgrade over those um, types of steel and you're getting a over three inch blade with about a three or excuse me two and three quarter cutting edge full flat grind love it got that really good finger choil as well as that thumb ramp so you can really you know lock into place and get some finer work done good stout blade uh, solid liner lock you know it's just a basic liner lock but i mean they milled out the handles so this comes in i think at like 3.8 maybe i'm kind of forgetting off the top of my head but i know it's under four ounces um, if i remember correctly for this um pocket knife huge real estate in the hand feels really good and four-way directional pocket clip so left right uh tip up tip down which is really cool uh you know it's chinese knife so the centering is not perfect but it has not floated right or left since i have purchased it and i've used the heck out of this thing we reviewed it early on in the year it's going to run you right around 45 dollars but for that price point i mean you're getting a usa made steel and then put together in china but g10 handles all the stuff that we talked about and it's a great i would say budget folder in the sub 50 dollar range that's going to give you some great bang for buck now below that, we have a redesign as well on the Rap Model 1. This year, Ontario started producing, now I'm seeing it almost prevalently everywhere, a D2 version of the Super Classic Rat Model 1. So that's what we have here, D2 blade steel, which is a, a leap over the old OS 8 version they were using. The OS 8 that um, Ontario used on the original version of the Rat was pretty subpar, um, sog and cold steel had much better OS 8 with their heat treat and crouch treating. Um, so it was decent for the price point, but you know you had to tune it up constantly. Whereas this D2 steel holds an edge much better, much longer. Uh, it is a little bit more rust resistant. I mean, uh, rust prone, excuse me, rust prone, but that's all right. Uh, I'm living a low humid environment, environment but uh, huge edge retention capabilities in comparison to the original uh, OS 8, and it's easy to tune up as well. And so you are getting a pretty beefy large blade three and a half inches full flat grind 90 degree spine liner lock brass bushings flow through construction zytel handles and a four-way directional pocket clip again guess what you'd be thinking okay so what are they charging like 50 bucks no if you just get this basic model you can find them for 30 dollars if you want to go with different color handle combinations i'm seeing them or car even carbon fiber between 40 and 50 bucks which i think is still a great price point for the knife um, but man just the basic th basic model you see here for 30 dollars is a mind-blowing steel now it is uh it's heavy. I don't carry it very often because it's so heavy at five ounces. I would love to see some version in the future where they figure out how to dial that down to like pushing four ounces, right around four. Drop an ounce on that thing would help out a lot. Um, I do carry it from time to time. And when I'm just looking for a beater blade, um, it, because it's so heavy or, you know, I'm, I've got heavy pants on and I got lots of work to do around the house or I'm going hiking or something like that, I'll, I'll use it. Um, but it's on the heavier end of blades. So that would be the one drawback, I would say, to this knife. But those for a budget setup are phenomenal redesigns for 2016. 
All right, folks, you're looking at the cream of the crop of all the blades we reviewed this year, the top, 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 top of the line. All of these are the best of for 2016, as I have said throughout this video, but these ones are the primo. If you got the money to spend, you will not be sorry with either of these blades. This is the Mini Gecko up here from Steel Will. Steel Will had came onto the market a few years ago with some fantastic designs and so far they're just blowing it up. And I, what I love is that they made a compact version of their original folder. So this is a three and a half inch knife, Italian made. And uh, when we got these and uh, we got one for Brian, my buddy bought one and we and I got one. Um, I, I ha When we were talking about it and it stayed true throughout the entire year, there are a lot of cool knives that we've seen on the table that we reviewed this year, but when it comes to pocket knives, I would say this is the one that stands out above all else, is this guy, the Steel Will Gecko, Mini Gecko, because of its elegance and its performance. There's just something about it that you know you are holding. It's like a Ferrari, I mean, you're holding, or a Porsche, you know, or a Lambo. I mean, you're holding something that is a work of art that is also extremely functional. So again, Italian made, and 690 steel. I love the steel that they're using on there. Rust resistant, holds a good edge, takes a good edge. Got that, just the, man, the pro the profile on this blade. High saber grind, swedge, swedge. Neither one is very thick, or excuse me, very thin though. So it has that really cool aesthetic appeal without it being too, you know, sharp and angled. And then you can't, you know, put your finger on it and, you know, push up on it. Just that little bit of jimping right there on that thumb ramp. Doesn't bite in, not hard at all. They got G10 and Micarta versions that are just angled so well. Zero hot spots. Tip up, right or left, pocket clip, lanyard hole, lock back design, and the, the bar back here, the lock back is rounded. So I mean, the attention to detail is really remarkable and uh, super smooth deployment. Lo uh, I love, in love with that knife and is awesome. It's gonna run you uh, right under 200 if I remember correctly. When it came out, it was like 180. Uh, it may have come down in price. Uh, again, we'll have links in the description below all over the place for you guys. Um, but yeah, you're gonna be pushing $200 on that blade, but it's worth every penny and you'll know that you're holding um, an elegant, elegant blade. It is heavy though. That was the one um, issue that I have. Again, it comes in at about five ounces because they have not milled out the liners. I think if they milled out the liners, uh, they could have dropped that down to like 4.4, 4.5, and that would have just been a little bit better. So it is a heavier knife. I consider it kind of more like my dress knife, or if those of you who like using your blades, that would be a great folder for the outdoors as well, either their full-size gecko or their mini, but the mini came out this year, and so that's why it's on the table. Then below that, we did this earlier on in the year as well. This is an Osborne design, and man, do I love it. The Benchmade 943, black on black. I love that aspect of the blade, and it's a little bit unique. You know, the 940 is pretty popular, and I'll probably get one, and you may see the a review coming 2017 of that model that they have now a few different versions of. But the reason I got this in 2016 is because I liked the black on black. I was looking for that. I liked the little bit different blade shape. It has a really long swedge clip point kind of design to it. 3.4 inches overall length. And I love the blue spine there. Uh, the other ones, the 940, when I was reviewing these and deciding on which Osborne I wanted, um, I, I didn't really like the purple spine. I really gravitated to the black on black with the blue. And I actually wanna thank my buddy Brian, our cameraman, he uh, gifted that to me, this knife to me. So it was a, not only a two for one, not only did I get an awesome, awesome folder, but also uh, a gift from my buddy. Uh, so tip up, right or left pocket clip, access lock, as we know, great thumb studs, just a great little slicer, saber grind, fills out my hand really well, ultra light, under three ounces for this ba bad boy, and uh, comes with S30V steel. So this thing is awesome, and it's gonna run you about the same. You can find them as low as like 150, I th uh, and then I think n normal running rate, you know, it's like 175, 180 again, so very c comparable in price to the steel will, um, but uh, man, I love it. And the aluminum handle scales or handles that they have there just really make this knife really elegant, really slim, sexy, deadly, and ultra lightweight as well. So that is why I love the Osborne 943. Well, there you have it folks, just a shot in a moment in time 
of my favorite folders for 2016 that have stood out to me that the market has produced that stand a head and shoulders above the rest. When you were to ask me, hey, what are some of the best blades of the year? These are my top lists. These six blades right here, uh, any one of them you would be happy with, any one of them would serve you well and are gonna give you good steals. They're gonna be, depending on the you know, price points, good price points, and I think all of them for their price ranges are high value as well. You're getting a lot for the money of what you're gonna put down regardless of what you're paying. Um, and just give a level of performance and just cool factor. You bust that one of these bad boys out and you just know you're happy. You know it's gonna get the work done for you and it's gonna feel good doing it um, and look good doing it. So all three of those things coming together for 2016. This is the list and I can't wait to see what the market produces in 2017 and we will see you next year as we bring 2017 to a close and see what's on the table next year. So with that, thank you guys so much for coming over here, checking out the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear your guys' thoughts. And as always, remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.